Managing my anger. One of the things that have always been a part of me is an overwhelming sense of anger and rage. It's been with me for as long as I can remember. I don't even have a memory of a time when I didn't feel this way. I can trace it back to when I was just five years old. My anger was a big problem throughout my life. As a teenager, if I went more than two weeks without punching a hole in the wall at home, it was a miracle. I got surprisingly good at fixing drywall because I had to repair all the damage I caused, breaking windows, smashing things. Boxing became my savior. It gave me an outlet for all that rage. I could spend six hours a day hitting punching bags and sparring with people. It kept me out of trouble. Before we begin, I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading the stoic philosophy. If you are not subscribed, I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video. A significant part of my anger was directed inward. It's not hard to understand that someone who hates others so intensely also has an immense self-loathing. I didn't realize how negative my inner thoughts had become until later. Our inner monologue is always there, so constant that we can forget it's even happening. It's like the fish swimming in water. They don't notice it because it's everywhere. But eventually I became aware of my self-talk, and it was ugly. I was constantly berating myself, using the harshest, most violent language imaginable. It didn't matter how small the mistake was. If I didn't do something perfectly, according to my impossibly high standards, I'd unleash a torrent of self-hate. I'd scream at myself, and it's hard to convey how intense that feeling was. I realized this had to change. When you hate yourself so much, it spills over into how you treat others. I was becoming unbearable to be around. I was working with a therapist who suggested that I could change this trait. I was skeptical, thinking it would take decades to undo something so ingrained. But they gave me an exercise. Every time I caught myself engaging in negative self-talk, I had to stop and pretend that it was one of my closest friends who had made that mistake. Then, I had to speak to them as if they were the one who messed up and I recorded these conversations on my phone. Changing my self-talk I used to have a big problem with anger and self-hate. This anger was with me for as long as I can remember, even when I was just a child. As a teenager, I had a habit of venting my anger by damaging things at home. I became surprisingly skilled at fixing walls and windows because I broke them so often. Boxing became a helpful way for me to release my rage. I would spend hours hitting bags and sparring with people, which kept me out of trouble. A significant part of my anger was directed towards myself. I didn't realize how negative my inner thoughts had become until later. Our inner monologue is like background noise, something we hardly notice. But when I became aware of it, I realized it was full of self-hate. Even the smallest mistake would trigger a harsh, self-critical response. I'd scream at myself, and it's challenging to describe how intense that felt. I knew I needed to change because this self-hate was affecting how I treated others. I became unbearable to be around. My therapist suggested an exercise to help me change. Whenever I caught myself engaging in negative self-talk, I had to stop and imagine it was one of my closest friends who made the mistake. Then, I had to speak to them as if they were the one who messed up recording these conversations on my phone. Text 1. Imagine I'm out there, practicing with my bow and arrow. Instead of getting frustrated when I miss the target, I try a different approach. I think to myself, what if my buddy Junior missed that shot? How would I talk to him? So I either pick up my phone or imagine doing so. I realize that I'd speak to Junior in a much kinder way. It's like talking to my closest friend, I'm gentle and encouraging. So I record this positive self-talk and send it to my therapist. It was quite a change for me. I was fully committed to this practice until my therapist suggested it. Trusting my therapist deeply, I thought, this is a huge challenge. I sent a lot of text messages and audio files which my therapist had to go through. But here's the astonishing part. It only took about four months to silence my inner critic. Let me clarify. When I say get rid of Bobby Knight, I mean the harsh inner voice that berated me. We compared it to Bobby Knight, the notorious basketball coach known for his explosive temper. 
He used to dominate my inner boardroom, but now he's not even present. In fact, I can't even recall what his voice sounded like. I've had opportunities to revert to my old ways, making mistakes just like before. However, the difference is in how I communicate with myself. I can honestly say that I treat myself with more kindness and compassion. Maybe I still set high standards, but I no longer beat myself up like I used to. This change has made me gentler with others too. I'm not sure how your inner dialogue aligns with others' perceptions of you, but I want to express my gratitude for sharing your journey. The practical step you took is truly remarkable. It highlights the I. Credible power of neuroplasticity. Four months might seem short, but you've spent 47 years immersed in self-criticism. It's a transformation worth considering for anyone facing their inner critic. Picture this. I'm out practicing archery, shooting arrows at a target. When I miss the bullseye, instead of getting mad at myself, I try something different. I imagine my friend Junior is the one who missed the shot. What would I say to him? I either grab my phone or picture doing so. I realize that I'd be much nicer to Junior I'd speak kindly and supportively, like talking to my closest buddy. So I record this positive self-talk and send it to my therapist. It was quite a change for me. I was fully committed to this practice until my therapist suggested it. I trust my therapist deeply, but this felt like a massive challenge. I sent lots of text messages and audio files, which my therapist had to go through. But here's the astonishing part. It only took about four months to silence my inner critic. Let me clarify. When I say get rid of Bobby Knight, I mean the harsh inner voice that berated me. We compared it to Bobby Knight, the notorious basketball coach known for his explosive temper. He used to dominate my inner boardroom, but now he's not even present. In fact, I can't even recall what his voice sounded like. I've had opportunities to revert to my old ways, making mistakes just like before. However, the difference is in how I communicate with myself. I can honestly say that I treat myself with more kindness and compassion. Maybe I still set high standards, but I no longer beat myself up like I used to. This change has made me gentler with others too. I'm not sure how your inner dialogue aligns with others' perceptions of you, but I want to express my gratitude for sharing your journey. The practical step you took is truly remarkable. It highlights the incredible power of neuroplasticity. Four months might seem short, but you've spent 47 years immersed in self-criticism. It's a transformation worth considering for anyone facing their inner critic. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.